Hello everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a question from a fellow boater, uh, Dan. Dan asks, Jeff, our friends have installed a mooring buoy in front of their house on Vancouver Island. We have a 30 foot uh, CNC Mark II and had an opportunity to spend most of the, most of the summer with them. Oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, we did have to catch the ferry back to the city a number of times and have left the boat. A number of times when we returned, we had a dead starter battery and a very low house battery. I have been reading about the EFOI and wondering if it might be a perfect solution. Okay. Well, first thing, uh, first things first, before we get in uh, a solution, I would say that if you're using your battery switches correctly and you have healthy batteries, and that would probably be my first step. We want, we want to first assess if your batteries are good. Because for me, when I'm hearing that question, you should be able to leave a boat on a mooring ball or at a dock away from shore power from a period of time. And I'm, I'm talking longer than a day, two days, a week, maybe even a month. And if your battery switches are off and all your everything that should be off is off, when you show back at your boat, you're at rest battery voltage. And this is assuming you don't have solar, you don't have wind, you're not connected to anything that is recharging your batteries, including a methanol fuel cell, which is an EFOI. Your battery voltage, you know, if you haven't been using the boat and the battery switches are off, should be about 12.6 to 12.8, right? Assuming you have a 12 volt system and double that if it's a 24 volt system. So before we go into the solution, we wanna make sure that when you leave the boat, the battery switches are off. You're not leaving the refrigerator on because that would certainly explain low house battery. But let's assume that's all done. You wanna make sure that there are no loads on your battery or very little loads on your batteries. Now, of course, monitoring, if you have a battery monitor, a battery monitor does draw power, but it's negligible. You know, you should be able to leave your boat for a week and come back and still have power at your battery with a battery monitor. Okay, all right, so now that we've put that aside, what about a methanol fuel cell? Yeah, a methanol fuel cell is a device certainly that you can consider for a mooring ball or for leaving your boat unattended because effectively it's a battery charger uh, with low output, you know, anywhere between, you know, the maybe five, four and a half amps, eight and a half amps, depending on the models. Um, like for example, the EFOI 210 um, outputs about eight and a half amps, DC charging and it's powered via methanol and it can turn itself on and off and you can have all these different settings. And that would be a good way to keep your batteries maintained and topped off if ever you had a discharge. Like for example, on my own boat, I don't have the luxury of living or having my boat where I currently work. My boat is in a more cruiser friendly area on the coast and so I don't see my boat every day and I might not see my boat actually now for over a month. So what do I do? Well. Um, I do have solar panels. So solar panels on my boat are a way for me to recharge my batteries in case I lose shore power. So I have solar. But sometimes it rains forever here in British Columbia or it feels like that. So what else? Well, the methanol fuel cell, what I do is I set it on automatic and if ever the voltage drops to 12.2, the methanol fuel cell will kick on and actually bring the batteries back up and actually then will shut itself off. So what I'm thinking about, I'm always thinking about layers of redundancy. I'm geeking out, right? I'm thinking, oh, what happens if? And so I do everything I need to from the battery switches, turn off all the loads. Next, I'm hoping that if ever I have a problem, solar every day is charging, even if I, my shore power cord gets disconnected or kicked off or whatever. Some accident happens, the circuit breaker trips, there's a power outage. And then the methanol fuel cell is another option, especially in the winter months when there's not as much sun. And a methanol fuel cell would be a good way to maintain the batteries when you're off the boat, but also, and that's the reason why we recommend battery or methanol fuel cells for some of us, is to also recharge the batteries when you're on board. Because sometimes we're on board using the boat. We're using the refrigerator, using the water pump, using the stereo, using the cabin lights. And we don't wanna run the engine and we're not temp like we're happy where we are here right now. You know, there's no tomorrow leaving somewhere else. We're at an anchorage we're away from shore power and we want to stay here for two, three days. Well, a methanol fuel cell is a way for you to have a smaller battery bank and having that battery bank replenished via methanol, via the EFOI, 
to recharge. Now, it's not the least expensive device to put on a boat, but what I always tell boaters is, consider this, when you've exhausted having a, you know, the largest battery bank that makes sense for your boat, you've done solar, and if solar makes sense and you're a place where there's sun, again, that makes sense because that power is, doesn't come with a cost. The sun is shining and it is. What about next? If, if option A, option B don't work, then you're left with what are other options. And some of us don't have generators on our boat. And so a methanol fuel cell is a cost-effective way for boaters that are not living aboard every day, but are using their boat, you know, on weekends, a week here, 30 days a year, 60 days a year, whatever it is, and that sometimes they find themselves just missing just that much of power. And the methanol fuel cell is a way for you to replenish. For instance, and in closing, on my boat, I have an e 210. So what does that mean? It's a methanol fuel cell that on average outputs 210 amp hours, assuming that I can act, that I need that. There's other models that are 150, 140, 80, 70, depending newer models, older models, because they're both coexisting right now. And so you can actually have a, mule, a, a fuel cell that is gonna generate, you know, let's say 150 amp hours a day. That's on, for example, on a, a, a 30 foot CNC Mark II, you could probably end up doing even an 80, E480 or E4140, and that would be plenty for that boat. And an E4 is about this big, this wide and about this high so it's not that big and you can fit it and it's light and it doesn't make any sound um, and very little vibration basically it's like a cat purring again if you're curious about efoy um, and you want to find out more we have a whole section on our website just on efoy bunch of videos just on efoy and lots of articles just on efoys so if you feel like geeking out you're at the right place Thanks for watching. I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get more of this cool content. And also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, we've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.